for the last talk of the day and of this workshop, we have Jeep Tao from Minnesota. Are you here? Yeah, I am here. Perfect. Uh, so he's going to talk about uh, pair density functional theory, right? Yeah. And yes. Should I put you for screen? Again? Okay, so share screen. Uh, can you see the slides now? I'm not yet. Yeah. Okay, now it's in the presentation mode. Is that correct? Yeah, I can see it on, on, from your window too. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, like organizing this uh, workshop. And the, my talk, uh, the talk today, the talk I'm going to give today is about uh, our recent, recent implementation of the analytical gradients for the compressed mode state PDFT method in OpenMocas. And uh, to begin this talk, I'd like to, uh, 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 so the, the first thing we, when we, when we think about like, uh, quantum, when we think about quantum mechanics, uh, one thing we would like to do is to apply it to, the, the, to study the excited, uh, the, the reaction dynamics, especially those involved the excited states. And we therefore need a very efficient method to construct a, a accurate, uh, potential in surfaces. And when we think about uh, accurate method, uh, as uh, Susie just talked about, we, one method is the Kunsham density functional theory. Here I'm showing a bunch of uh, uh, the performance of Kunsham DFT with the density functionals for some single reference systems and for some multi reference systems. As you can see here, uh, the Kunsham DFT can perform, perform really well for the single reference systems, but when it comes to the multi-reference systems, uh, the errors are usually increased by a factor of two. Or three. So that means when we do, uh, when we want to study the excited state potential surfaces, which are usually multi-reference, multi-configurational, we we might need to use a multi-reference version of the density function, functional theory to study it. And we have this method that is called MCPDFT. The formula of MTPDFT is shown here, and it includes the one electron, oops, it includes the one electron density, a one electron energy, uh, and a two and a classical Coulomb electron uh, energy from the multi-configurational reference wave function, and then we have a last term which is called the on top density function, functional, uh, on, on top energy, and we expect it to pick up the missing energies that are not included in the first three terms in this formula. And we usually compare our formula of MCPDFT with Kunshan DFT. And we can see that basically the formula look the same, but we want to emphasize that the density we obtain from MCPDFT are the multi, are the converged multi configuration wave function and we no longer optimize it. However, in Kunshan DFT, as you know, we usually optimize the density based on density function we have. Another way to look into MCPDFT is, is to use the matrix form. Uh, in the matrix representation, when we first obtain the reference wave functions, we then have a diagonalized uh, Hamiltonian matrix. And then what we do in MCPDFT is to replace the diagonal elements with the MCPDFT energies. But look, about over here, we do not have, have a correction for the off diagonal elements. So that would mean the off diagonal elements are always zero. And this will, get, this will mean that we may have a we will have a wrong topology of the conical intersections on the planetary surface. And also we may expect some double crossing of the planetary curves or planetary surfaces where they shouldn't do that. So in order to solve this problem, we have proposed a multi-state multi scheme for, with the PFT method. And in this multi-state scheme, we first rotate the reference states into a set of intermediate states. And then we have a Hamiltonian matrix that are for the intermediate states. So they are no longer diagonalized. And then we replace the elements with the PDFT energies for the intermediate states. And then in the last step, we diagonalize this matrix. And this basically is a procedure of how we obtain a, what's we, what we call the multi-state PDFT energies. And depending on how we obtain the intermediate states, so it means basically this step, we have proposed several methods, and the method I'm going to talk about today is the compressed multi-state PFT. 
So in the same SPDIT method, the intermediate states maximize the following function. As you can see from this right term, is a uh, uh, it's an active active part of the classic chrome energy, and if it only do a sum over states for this term, we can see that it's equivalent to do the to maximize the sum over states of the classical column energies. And because the classical column energies are like maximized, we would expect the electronic densities are more compressed. So this is why we call our method compressed model state PDFT. So we have done a bunch of uh, some applications of CMS PDFT. And the first one is uh, the lithium fluoride, which is a very uh, commonly used model system to test the method. We first apply MCPDFT to study the potential energy curves of lithium fluoride. And as you can see here, we have two problems. Why is that? Why is this unphysical dip of the potential energy curves? And also, you can see that they curve the, plan, the ground state and extent state cross twice. So this means that MCPDFT is not good for to, to give a topologically correct potential energy curve. When we use same SPFT, however, we can see that both problems are removed. So this would mean that same SPFT is a more is a better suited method for uh, for studies that involve excited state potential energy surfaces. Not only have we done this uh, study for uh, for for potential curves, we also did a, a, a application on the spin property, which is called the D value. The D value measures the uh, transition barrier from one spin state to another, and then it can be obtained uh, through experiments. So I'm here listing the experiment values for this bunch of systems. And we, we use MCPDFT and the same SPDFT to study this D values too. And here I'm listing the differences of MCPFD and CMSPFD values compared with experiment value, experiment experiment values. So as you can see here, uh, the CMSPFD basically gives very small error compared to MCPFD, and even for the for the last system, uh, the MCPFD predicts a wrong sign of the D value, while CMSPFD gives the correct sign, and is the D value is reasonably good. So how you introduce this, I hope you, you can see that CMS PDFT is a, a better method than MCPDFT for a variety of applications. So having introduced this, uh, I'd like to come to the main topic of today's uh, talk, that is <clears throat> the implementation of our, uh, the analytic gradients for the CMS PDFT energies. Uh, because the CMS PDFT energy is not obtained uh, by very efficiently optimize the energy with respect to the wave function parameters, we need to use the Lagrange, Lagrange method to, uh, to make the calculation of the gradient easier. So in this Lagrangian, we have three wave, wave function parameters. The first two here correspond to the orbital rotation and the state rotation, as you can see here. And they are also, they also exist in the Lagrangian for the SA, for the state average has SF. Uh, and uh, analytical gradients, yeah. And what's, uh, what's the third term here is unique in CMS PDFT. Uh, this wave function parameter uh, defines the intermediate states. And then with this Lagrangian multiplier, with this Lagrangian defined, the next step will be to solve for these Lagrangian multipliers. So the Lagrangian multipliers are solved by taking the derivative of the, the Lagrangian with respect to all three uh, wave function parameters to zero. That will give us a set of equations, and then that set of equations can be rewritten in the matrix form as following. And note that there are two terms, that are, there are two blocks that are zero. This is because we determine these two wave function parameters first, and after that, we got the intermediate states. So this means that uh, th these two derivatives are irrelevant to how we obtain the intermediate states. So that's why they are zero. And taking advantage of the fact that this term is, these two blocks are zero, we can solve for the Lagrange multipliers, the x, y, z part, uh, using two steps. In the first step, we solve for only the z part. And 
after we obtain these z values, we can rewrite the equation as 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 such. And this uh, this type of equation can be solved using the modules that are uh, implemented in the MCLR module in OpenMOCAS. So we basically just reuse that part of the code to do to find the Lagrange multiplier multipliers for the x and the y part. Okay, so having solved the uh, Lagrange multipliers, the next step we are going to do is to uh, calculate the, the derivatives of the energy by calculating the the by calculating the gradient of the energy by calculating the gradient of the Lagrangian. Uh, but before that, we made a simplification of the Lagrangian by rewriting it as a bunch of effective density matrices. And note here that the purple terms, these two terms in the second line are coming from only the first, uh, the, the purple term in the first line. And also like the green term, this QA term in the, in the first line is only contributing to the two electron part in the second line. And this orbital and the theta rotation part are contributing to both the y electron part and to the two electron part. With this uh, rewritten form of the Lagrangian, when we, the gradient of the Lagrangian can be calculated uh, by taking the product of the effective density matrices multiplied with the gradient of the y electron or two electron integrals. And we have an additional term here that is due to the uh, renormalization of the uh, basis functions. And this is basically the, the equation we, we implement in more cast to, to help us calculate the analytical gradient of the MSPLT. Next, I'd like to show an application of our gradient, of our grad yeah, gradient in open cast. And uh, so we can build the, uh, ground, uh, the equilibrium distances for the ground state and the first state steady state of the node using the CMS BFT method. And I'm here first tabulating the, the experimental values. And I'm also tabulating the differences of the geometries that are obtained from the fitted surface of MRCI. And then the CMS, the difference of the CMS geometries are tabulated uh, as a difference compared with experiment two. So as you can see here, um, the CMS PFD geometries are very uh, agreeing very well with experiments, and they are very similar to the geometries of the MRCA fitted curves. Uh, so by introducing this, I hope you can see that our gradient is very accurate, and CMS PFD is a very accurate method too. And the last, I like to I like to show you how um, how efficient our method is. So over here, I'm I'm showing the um, time that are cons consumed for the gradient calculations with SA cas SAF calculations with different uh, active spaces and different basis sets. And also I'm showing the difference or like the additional amount of time that are needed if you want to run CMS BFD gradients compared with the SA cas SAF gradients. And the, as you can see here, the additional, the additional amount of time that are required for CMS BFD gradient calculation is only a small fraction of the SAKSSF gradient calculation. So this basically means that if you are you're, if you are able to afford the SAKSSF gradient calculation, you can basically run the CMS PFT calculation to improve your uh, accuracy. So with that, I like to conclude my um, talk with the two with two points. The first is that we have successfully implemented the CMS PFT analytical gradient. In open mocas. And the second one is that uh, the CMS BFD is an efficient method for studying the planetary surfaces, not only by calculating this, but also by calculating the uh, derivatives, the, and the, uh, the gradients. Yeah. So, with that, I will thank my advisor, Professor Dan Truller, and my uh, co collaborators, uh, Professor Gagaladi and Professor Lynch. And, Dr. Hermes, Ty Scott, uh, Dr. Stan, and Dr. Joe for the for the collaboration and uh, and uh, advices in this work, and I'd like to thank OpenMocast for providing such a good uh, platform for me to implement our method. I'd like to thank uh, NSF for the funding and Minnesota Supercomputing Center for uh, providing computational resources. And with that, I'd like to take questions.
we actually have plenty of time. So we just want all to want to go home. <laughs> I mean, so I can ask uh, quickly like uh, you have mentioned in the beginning conical intersection or crossings. Have you actually looked now at how it is behaving around these points and also, do you have non erratic couplings or do you have a plan for it? Uh, could you please ask that again? Do I have what? Uh, have you looked at uh, the behavior of this, uh, this, this CMS PDFT around the conical intersection? Mm -hmm. So, have you looked at that? And also, do you plan to implement the non erratic couplings? Oh, uh, I, th yeah, I think this, uh, so. Uh, two days ago, uh, Paul Calio, he in his pre presentation, he mentioned that he <laughs> would like to implement the non-native value company for CMS PDFT. So I think he is mainly working on this. But in our uh, current plan, we have a method uh, that is called Papa CSDM. Uh, I do not know too much details about that, but that is, that that method is. Uh, that is the method like, with which you can run uh, run dynamics, and that a benefit of that method, uh, 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 an advantage of that method is that it does not require the non-ideal non value coupling uh, in the calculation for you to run a reaction dynamics. So I think that is that is the reason why in our group we are not currently like focusing on uh, implementing the next, but actually there is. Uh, so Paul is actually working on this in the Gagali ID group. Okay, so thank you again. And yep. thank you for all the speakers of this presentation. Oh, you have a question maybe? No? Okay, thank you very much.